Hi, it's George from Any Old Music. Today I thought we'd take a look at some film music, specifically John Williams' uh, The Flag Parade from the prequel Star Wars movie, The Phantom Menace. For my analysis, as I'm interested in the composition and arrangement, as opposed to its use audio-visually and semantically in the film, uh, I take a look at the concert version published by Hal Leonard. Uh, fortunately, there's a score available, a score video available, uh, of the concert arrangement, which I'll put a link below in the description. Um, I'll also put a link to a film score transcription of the cue as it appears in the film, uh, so you can see the differences if you like. Starting with the themes then, in this arrangement of the flag parade, the primary distinction between sections is the use of different melodies and the forms and textures within which they are presented. The work alternates between three thematic units. The first theme, Theme A, typically pr is presented by unison horns, although it has some other doublings uh, as well. It's, broadly speaking, a stable and stepwise moving theme, uh, although it does enjoy a few leaps in the middle of the phrasing. The second theme, Theme B, counterpoints Theme A sectionally. It's similar in mixing step and excitable leaping intervals, but is much uh, more rhythmically unstable. It uses shorter rhythmic durations on uh, stronger beats of the bar that lead on to like, resting points within well, what we'd interpret as weaker beats of the bar. William further brings out the instability of this theme by actually removing the bass. We have a, a heavy bass pedal harmony that often accompanies theme A, but he removes it for theme B. The last set of themes is a pair of fanfares which come in two forms. One is a homophonic planing major chord, and then the other one, the second one, is a polyphonic quartile figure that is reminiscent of the opening Star Wars fanfare. Uh, the fanfare statements tend to bridge or transition between the other thematic units. They sit between themes A and B usually. Focusing first on the tonal and modal shifts in the work, we can see two relationships emerge from the structural overview. The first of these is the median relationships B flat and D. D and F, F and A flat, and B flat and G. The second of these relationships is the alternating pattern between parallel major and minor keys. These switches pair with the changes between theme and the transitional fanfare statements. If we recall from our analysis of Mozart's E minor violin sonata, we identified how concise and closely related the tonal areas were to one another, uh, using the circle of fifths to visualise this. We also find that the outlier in this cluster of tonalities was the parallel G minor modulation. If we apply the same approach to Williams's The Flag Parade, we get a more disparate collection of keys. The reason for this is the underlying harmonic forces are different between Mozart and Williams. In the 18th century, uh, it was aesthetic for harmony to orient around dominant and tonic relationships, both on a small and large scale. In the case of Williams, his music is influenced by later 19th and 20th century harmonic aesthetics. While dominant relationships are still important, we can observe this in the move to G minor at the end of the flag parade, and the transition from F to B flat between section 7 and A. Medium relationships are what characterise the harmony and tonal scheme of this composition. A better way to understand and visualise medium relationships is to use a tonics diagram. Tonics is essentially a linear stratification of the circle of fifths. Uh, for instance, if we break the circle of fifths and stretch it out into a line, and then add offset parallel lines that allow us to form major and minor chords by drawing triangles between adjacent pitches, we get what is known as a tonics diagram. Using a tonics, I have created an animation of the flag parade's tonal structure. Progressing gradually between the sections, the circles highlight the tonic chord of each tonal centre. The tonics diagram, as you can see, is also a good demonstration of how close major and minor keys are in terms of voice leading. Note how, for the most part, the circles highlighting tones on the tonics do not travel very far, and there are often one or two pitches that remain rooted while the others move. The D major to F minor relationship is a more distant modulation which we can see in the tonics where all three circles move between these keys. However, to bridge this, Williams delays the movement of the pedal point harmony uh, from D, while the repeated theme A melody asserts F minor is not until two bars later that the F becomes the harmonic pedal as well. 
I can only speculate on the thinking, but I would assume the reason for this was to make the transition less uh, sudden, because obviously, as we've seen in the tonnets, all the pitches move. There's no similar pitches uh, when we reduce it to the root triad. By having the melody change first and the harmony shortly afterwards, we're not confronted with the abrupt tonal changes of both those things moving together. It unfolds gradually over several bars. While the melodies impose modality, the pedal points root the tonality of each section. Anchoring each section, pedal points sustain or repeat a specific tone. They usually are in the bass, although they can be imposed anywhere in the texture. For instance, Williams also adds an inverted pedal point in section 17 of the flag parade. This is where the pedal point is at the highest point of the texture, an inverted pedal point that is. Oscillating between the root and the leading tone, he's able to create uh, an emphatic finale section by uh, filling out the texture, textural span, uh, that is. Most frequently, Williams places his pedal points in this piece below the texture in the bass. Uh, just like an anchor, he gives uh, this pedal some incredible orchestral weight uh, in the very low bass registers as well. Although his orchestration varies subtly through the piece, he often orchestrates his pedals using bassoons, tuba timpani and cello on the upper octave, with contrabassoon and double bass on the lower octave. The piano adds to this uh, doubling both octaves. To put this weight and register into context, the score demands double basses that can reach a very low D1. Standard double basses typically have a low fourth string tuned to E1. However, to reach D1, the double basses will need a fifth string or extension device that usually goes down to C1. If you'd like to know more about that, I'd recommend a video by linking it below that covers extensions and uh, five string double basses in more detail. The pedal point imposes tonal centres that might otherwise be unclear in other portions of the music. If we take theme A for example, it starts promisingly in the key of D minor or in one of its other keys, F minor, by emphasising the root pitch in minor third. The tonality and modality are strongly established with the pedal. However, Williams quickly destabilises this by using the augmented fourth degree of the scale not tonicizing, but polarizing the fifth degree of the, the minor scale that we're in. The augmented fourth does this by its unstable relationship with the tonic and its leading tone relationship with the fifth. While we never leave D minor or D aeolian in this passage, the G sharp adds anticipation and momentum to the melody as it anticipates the fifth degree, the high point of this phrase through these tonal relationships. In bar 6, Williams does something similar with the root using chromatic inflections again. The melody falls to the flat and second degree of the scale, E flat. Uh, a Phrygian modal quality at first, the flat and second darkens the modality of the music here before darkening even further through the use of the flattened Locrian fifth in bar 7. Considered the darkest of the modes, the Locrian passage is abrupt and the music is quickly pushed back into the light. Excuse the. Star Wars puns at the end of bar 7 and into bar 8. The quick succession of the F, E, natural and D quickly reimposes D aeolian at the very end of this section portion of the melody. I guess the result of these modal interchanges is a miniature dramatic arc uh, that is not only made by contour but modal and tonal inflections. If we reignite the earlier analogy of the pedal point as being an anchor the melody line is, I guess, the ship and the sea. Each modal shift or chromatic inflection is the sea enacting a force on the ship, uh, causing it to pull on the line between it and the anchor. Tension in this imaginary line reflects the harmonic tension that we hear and feel between the melody and the pedal point. In contrast, the dramatic quality of the B theme sections is created in the removal of our harmonic anchor, the pedal point. With no pedal point, theme B sections counterpoint theme A through their top heaviness. Williams further capitalises on breaking anchor by writing a melody that I've sort of touched upon already that alters the rhythmic emphasis from beat 1 to beat 2. Like having the rug pulled from underneath our feet, the excitement of these sections is no longer characterised by the tension between melody and pedal, but rather the possibility of capsizing, I guess. You know, as I've said, we're top heavy and the rug's been swept from under our feet. 
In removing the pedal point through theme B sections, the music suddenly becomes top heavy. The orchestration exacerbates this situation by providing a very light accompaniment on the horns in a more middle uh, part of the texture. The accompaniment is syncopated as well, counterpointing a strongly foregrounded high melody line that is doubled across octaves by violins, violas and woodwinds. Any bass interjections as well are fragmentary um, and also off the beat too, which further undermines our sense of meter through this passage. When we think of the term counterpoint, we often think of polyphony, musical lines playing simultaneously to create melody and harmony. However, in many, if not all pieces, there is a linear counterpoint unfolding on a multiple scales of the composition. On a small scale, it could be the progression of phrases within melodic sequences, or even the individual notes of those phrases. On a larger scale, it could be sentences or whole sections or movements in a composition. The flag parade is no exception, and in counterpoint sections, it efficiently generates interest. While the composition uses plenty of repetition, it often breaks those repetitions and offers a degree of change. For instance, the repetition of theme A is broken by the plain in chord fanfare statement before returning uh, to theme A in a different uh, tonality, a different key. These fanfare statements are themselves varied in length, while also altering the modality of the preceding theme A section. The theme B sections, as we've seen, also counterpoint theme A by raising the anchor, removing the pedal point, and having a more top-heavy melodic quality. In breaking up repetitions, Williams is playing and managing rates of change within the music. Doing this will undoubtedly allow him to compose extended pieces of music in a shorter amount of time. Hi, sorry to quickly interject before finishing this video off. I forgot to mention something that I probably thought you might be interested in. Um, basically, for these kind of videos, particularly, although sometimes all the videos that I do and articles, I create a one-page summary. But this one week, I'm obviously doing one on the flag parade, which might be of interest to people. Uh, I put them on, in, uh, on Pinterest, but I also send them out as HD downloadable uh, attachments in my weekly newsletters as well. Uh, on any old music so if that's something you're interested in as well as subscribing to this video which I'm sure you're definitely gonna do um, feel free to subscribe to the mailing list I always put unsubscribe links in as well so if you find it's not for you then you can always unsubscribe but they're just usually weekly roundups with stuff that I've made that's hopefully of interest and of educational value in analyzing Williams as a flag prayer we've learned three techniques we can try to apply in our work Firstly, pedal points, which can anchor chromatic modal melodies. These melodies can then pivot around this fixed point, the pedal point, and we can create tension and interest by controlling the relationships between the melody and the pedal harmony. Secondly, we've learned about median relationships, which we can use to revitalize our material without the need for extensive transitions to achieve smooth uh, manipulations of the thematic material. And lastly, we've learned about briefly about structural counterpoint, how the units of our compositions complement and strengthen qualities in other sections. More broadly, the composition shows us that well-crafted, catchy music need not be complex. If you've enjoyed this video, then subscribe, click the little bell icon, like and give us some feedback or questions below in the comments section. I've been George Marshall at Any Old Music. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.